A brief video I'm uploading to champion the highly entertaining 1925 Japanese silent film Orochi. The title translates to Serpent in English. Possibly the creative genesis of the samurai film as we know it today, Untaro Futagawa directs iconic star Sumasaburo Bando in this exciting, merciless, impressive production. I don't know if films like this were considered dime a dozen at one time in Japan, but this one certainly impresses me. I enjoy it much in the same way I enjoy the later samurai cinema of the 20th century, although this silent picture's emphasis on visceral close-ups, painterly framing, and crushing montage also has me enjoying it as an early experiment in cinematic communication. My favourite piece of technical creativity in this film, to my memory, occurs during this climactic duel between our protagonist and the countless policemen. During several shots panning over the determined soldiers, numerous frames are removed to give the impression of jump cuts throughout said pan. In general, the editing becomes very adventurous towards the end of this sequence as the protagonist, Hasaburo, becomes increasingly overwhelmed with the sheer number of armed men around him. Cinema can be most fantastically effective at transmitting the data of consciousness, to borrow Goddard's phrase. Everyone ought to view Orochi. If one loves silent films or samurai cinema, or is unfamiliar with either. No matter what your circumstances, viewing 1925's Orochi will be an enriching, rewarding experience. Orochi set a standard for the depiction and choreography of sword fighting in samurai pictures of decades to come. But don't, don't take my word for it. I would like to share if you will Matsuda Film's entry on Orochi. Matsuda Film was established in 1952 by Matsuda Shinsue with the goal of excavating and restoring Japanese silent films. In July 1925, Bando Sumasuburo, known as Bandsuma, began Bandsuma Productions, the first Japanese independent production company headed by a star. Hiroji was its second film. The film begins with an ominous warning. Not all those who wear the name of a villain are truly evil men. Not all those who are respected as noble men are worthy of the name. Many are those who wear a false mask of benevolence to hide their treachery and the wickedness of their true selves. In the same year that this film was made, the law of the maintenance of public order was enacted. This law set severe penalties, including capital punishment, for anyone involved in activities related to national revolution or a repudiation of the system of private ownership of property. The law was written with extremely vague terms to give it a wide range of application. It was used extensively by the government to repress liberal performers and writers. The law for the maintenance of public order remained in place until it was repealed in 1945 by order of the occupation forces. 1925 also saw the introduction of compulsory military training for all students in junior high schools and above. After the relatively liberal and creative Taisho period, which lasted a mere 15 years from 1912 to 1926, Japan was about to enter the darkness of Shawa, an age that saw the rise of a national and military fanaticism that led Japan down the path of war to eventual defeat and destruction. This film's protagonist, Hazaburo Kuritomi, is an honourable lower-class samurai who, despite his noble ideas, is rejected by the evil forces that dominate his society. Until the beginning of the 1920s, all period films followed essentially the same plot, which is standard in the films of Ono Matsunosuke, the first star of Japanese cinema, the heroes of these films, proud samurai of the upper classes, inevitably prevail over their villainous opponents as they defend what is right. Suzukita Rokuhai, who wrote Orochi's scenario, had a different message to convey. His film was a response to the changes that he saw happening around him in Japan, crying in the dark against the forces of fascism and imperialistic authoritarianism. During an interview for a contemporary film magazine, Suzukita was quoted as saying the following, I have never thought of myself as a socialist. What I say in my films is simply a reflection of the cries of the younger generation in our society. In addition to the provocative ideology that underlines Orochi's storyline, the mere fact that it was the first major undertaking by the first independent production company founded in Japan lent this film a tremendous significance and imposed a great responsibility on the people who made it. They were all very young, a group of young and rebellious spirits, and Suma, already the king of cinema, and head of his own production company, was 25 years old. Scenarists Suzukita and director Furugawa Buntaro were also in their 20s, and cinematographer Ishino Sizo was only 21. Tamaki Yutako, who plays Nami, the woman Bansuma loves in this film, told about the atmosphere surrounding the film. 
This film was a matter of life and death for us. We had just left Makino Productions. We had no money, we had to shoot most of the scenes outside because we didn't even have a studio to shoot in. We knew, that if, we knew that if we failed at this, it would be very difficult for others to create their independent companies. Fantasuma kept us going through the whole thing. Naturally, with all these rebellious ideas, the film did not make it past the senses scissors unscathed. Over 20% was cut outright. Many scenes were ordered to be reshot. Even the title, which was originally set as Scoundrel slash Outlaw, was rejected and in its place Orochi, which has no inherent meaning, was selected. Still, director Fudigawa Puntaro asserted that it was a very exciting time for both Bantasuma and myself. We threw ourselves into this film and despite all the cuts, we remained faithful to the image that Rokuhai had conceived. So this is like a, actually, this is just me coming in here, but it says, um, Orochi, which has no inherent meaning. I believe there is something to be said for Orochi being a serpent, and certainly there's something, something to be said for its protagonist behaving as a serpent as he, as he nears his demise. A serpent is still dangerous even as it is dying, you know. When Orochi was released, he caused a stir greater than even Bantsuma had imagined. Crowds from proceeding theatres around the country. Although there are many who came mainly to see the new fast-paced sword-fighting style that Bantsuma displays in it, there were also many who were moved by the film's deeper message. Messages. We are very fortunate to be able to see this film in nearly perfect condition. The vast majority of silent Japanese films have been lost to remain in only fragmentary form. However, Orochi's, one of the only Japanese silent films, for which the original negative has been preserved. This is not the result of mere luck. Of the over 200 films in which he appeared, Bantusuma kept only the negative for Orochi, that in itself is indicative of the value that he placed in this film. The Benshi, narrator, performance on this film was done by the late Matsuda Shinsue. Fortunately, before his death, Mr. Matsuda completed recorded versions of his Benshi performance on over 40 silent works. Undoubtedly, Orochi was one of his favourite films. The English subtitles in this film are based on Matsuda's commentary. Hell yes, Orochi was inspired by my kind of creative philosophy. Have a great one.